what's up guys, Will here for GSM Arena. Not everyone is after a sleek glass phone that shatters if you look at it wrong. Some people want durability, and the Eulophone Armor 9 is here to deliver. Let's see what this beast of a phone is all about in our full review. The Eulophone Armor 9 is a smartphone built for a singular purpose, to be the toughest phone on the block, which can survive pretty much anything you throw at it. If you're not used to this type of hyper-rugged device, the appearance of the Armor 9 is a bit of a shock. Unlike those curvy glass phones that are so popular, this one is thick, bulky, and built like a tank. This thing is pretty heavy, and using it one-handed requires some extra effort. In fact, in a pinch you could probably even use it for a quick workout. The Armor 9 does have its charm. The olive-colored metal frame looks quite clean, like something from the military. I especially like the detailing on things like the metal volume buttons. The back of the phone is made of rubber-like plastic, with a satisfying diamond-shaped texture that Eulophone says is enhanced with aluminum alloy. On top of that, the corners, top, and bottom of the phone are more like rubber bumpers, all great buffers for shock absorption. There is also an elevated plastic frame around the screen to keep it from hitting the ground in a fall. In a similar fashion, the camera setup on the back is a bit recessed to protect the lenses. This means the phone is really drop resistant. It's actually rated to survive a 1.2 meter drop onto concrete. This is one of the nicest things about having such a rugged device. Phones will get dropped over the course of their lifetime, no matter how careful you try to be. And with a device like the Armor 9, you can sleep soundly knowing that this isn't an issue here. And it's not just about drops. The Armor 9 is IP68 rated for water and dust resistance too. The water resistance goes all the way up to IP69K, which protects against pressurized water. Maybe thanks in part to the tight rubber caps on the phone's ports. Plus the Armor 9 is also compliant with numerous military standards for temperature and altitude shocks, high humidity, solar radiation endurance, and acid atmosphere, among others. This thing isn't indestructible, but is pretty darn tough, as you can see. And in case you don't think the phone is tough enough, there's a protective case you can buy. With this rubber frame, it offers even more shock absorbance, and it has a handy belt clip and a carabiner. Another optional accessory is the endoscope which attaches to some pins on the side of the Armor 9. It's water resistant and comes with a 2 meter long cable and LEDs for lighting. The endoscope allows you to have a look inside of tight spaces. Our unit actually ran into a bit of a mishap, but we were able to try it out for a while. Let's move on to the Armor 9's display. It's a 6.3 inch IPS LCD with a 1080p resolution and, of course, shatter resistant glass. The bezels are rather large here, and yet there's still a notch cut out for the selfie cam. At least you get a notification LED up there. This screen is pretty good. It's the same size and resolution as the previous Armor 7, but has deeper blacks. Contrast is excellent here. Plus, it's plenty bright. We measured up to a maximum of 550 nits with a brightness slider. One curious design choice on the Armor 9 is the positioning of its single speaker. It's located on the back of the phone. This means that while you're facing the screen, the sound will be directed away from you, and if the phone were on its back, the sound coming out of it would be muffled. For this reason, despite the speaker being rather loud in itself, the Armor 9 scored below average in our loudness test. The sound quality is good though, with well presented mids and even a bit of bass. I can't escape, I'm seeing you everywhere. And you get a 3.5mm jack for headphones, as well as FM radio support with them plugged in. As far as storage goes, there are 128 gigs on board, and it is expandable. Notice the thick rubber seal on the tray here. And you can wake up and unlock the phone with the side-mounted fingerprint reader, which is separate from the power button. It works fine, though the positioning is low and a bit awkward. What is annoying is that it's really easy to accidentally touch this part of the phone with your hand when carrying the device. This causes missed activations of the reader, and you'd end up with the fingerprint reader blocked by too many false attempts. The Armor 9's interface is a Eulophone launcher that's pretty close to stock Android 10. It all looks pretty vanilla here, except for the custom icons, and there are no ads whatsoever. 
Eulophone has sprinkled in a few changes here and there though. For one, there's no app drawer. To get one, you'll need to use a custom launcher. One useful function is a dedicated push to talk or PTT hardware key. With it, you can use the phone with various PTT apps, or you can program the key to activate shortcuts. And the custom toolbox app is quite useful. It provides a bunch of functions in one convenient place, including a compass, level, plumb bob, and protractor. Under the hood of the Armor 9 is a MediaTek Helio P90 chipset. It's a mid-range chip that's already two years old, and is definitely outclassed by newer hardware. Games aren't this phone's strong suit, though you can get them to work alright if you turn down graphics settings. If you don't care that much about gaming, the Helio P90 provides solid performance that's enough to handle your daily tasks and then some. Battery life is truly impressive here though. The Armor 9 packs a huge 6600mAh battery, and with it, was able to score an awesome 148 hour endurance rating in our tests, one of the best scores we've seen. Plus, you can even charge that giant battery at a pretty decent clip. The bundled 18 watt charger was able to take the phone from 0 to 35% charge in half an hour. The Armor 9's camera setup includes a 64 megapixel main camera with a quad bear sensor, and a 2 megapixel camera for depth sensing. There's also a special FLIR camera setup, which we'll go into in a bit. The regular camera app has its quirks. By default, it opens up to the 64 megapixel mode while you'd expect better quality from the 16 megapixel photo mode, as this is from a quad bear sensor. Anyway, 16 megapixel photos are nice. Besides the foliage rendition, they have nice detail, and are noise free. The contrast is average though, and so is the dynamic range. We did notice a yellowish tint to the photos too. The 64 megapixel shots aren't good, and we're not sure why this is the default mode. They take longer to shoot and take up more space. The depth sensor is there to help with portrait mode shots. These come out in 8 megapixels, and they're just okay. You do get a nice defocused background, but the subject detection is fooled by things like a print on a t-shirt, and the contrast is off. In low light, photo quality from the main camera is inconsistent. Sometimes these look great, sharp with lots of detail, low noise, and preserved colors. Other times they come out soft and smudgy. There is a night mode available, and it produces excellent shots that come out at 12.5 megapixels. The exposure is bright, and there's low noise and good contrast. Selfies taken with the 8 megapixel front facing camera aren't too great. They're noisy with average detail, and they often look a tad out of focus, probably because the focus sweet spot isn't exactly an arm's length. You can shoot video in up to 4K at 30 FPS, and the results aren't good. The detail level is poor, the colors are off, and dynamic range is just average. Plus, there's no video stabilization available. Now, let's talk about the FLIR camera. The system has an infrared snapper and a regular 2 megapixel one, which work together to provide you a detailed thermal image. With this, you can see the world around you in a totally different way, and you can use the filters to narrow down what you're looking for. And you can use the FLIR cam to get a numerical temperature readout as well. Overall, it's quite intuitive and pretty useful. I would consider the IR cam one of the main unique features of this phone. So that's the Eulophone Armor 9. You get an incredibly durable build that could last you for years without incident. There's also a pretty decent LCD screen, incredible battery life, a solid mid-range chipset, a decent regular camera, and a unique thermal imaging cam, all for around 550 euros. Just have in mind that this is a phone primarily built for a specific kind of consumer, professionals, whose line of work might put their phone in danger. Otherwise, most people wouldn't really consider getting this huge, rather clunky device. But at the end of the day, Eulophone has accomplished what it's set out to create, a handheld tank that you can surf the web with. If this speaks to you, then the Armor 9 is worth recommending. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.